nearly 20 million acres of America's farmland may be contaminated with PFAs. That's 5% of all crops in the U.S. PFAs are a class of nearly 15,000 chemicals used in products to make them resistant to water, stains, and heat. PFAs are commonly referred to as forever chemicals. They're called this because these chemicals don't naturally break down in the body. And the consequences are dire. PFAs have been linked to cancer, liver problems, thyroid issues, birth defects, kidney disease, decreased immunity, and other serious diseases. The problem for farmers is that PFAs have been used in fertilizer. For decades, biosolids were poured onto the top 12 inches of soil. According to the EPA, it was used to, quote, improve and maintain productive soils and stimulate plant growth. But what is a biosolid? Essentially, it's human poop and industrial waste. It's a product of the wastewater treatment process. Liquids and solids are separated. Solids are then treated physically and chemically to produce a semi-solid. These are commonly referred to as a biosolid or sometimes sewage sludge. Although they are nutrient-rich, they can also be comprised of any of the 90,000 man-made chemicals that are circulating in the nation's sewers. Treatment plants can then send it to a farm to use, which is much cheaper than sending it to a landfill. The problem is that these biosolids were contaminated with PFAs. Farmers are just now learning about this, and it's causing many of them to lose their entire farm. There are no national requirements to test sewage sludge for PFAs. Surprisingly, the EPA only requires monitoring for non-heavy metals. This is despite the EPA having toxicological profiles for 12 PFAs known to be in sludge. So how much sludge is on our crops? A lot. According to the EPA, more than half of all sewage produced by wastewater treatment plants in the U.S. is spread on farm fields every single year. This biosludge has been applied to land since the 70s, as it was originally pitched as a cost-effective way to improve soil fertility. From just 2016 to 2021, more than 19 billion pounds of biosludge was spread on American farms. All across the country, farmers are being hit hard by this PFA pollution. There's Adam Nordell, a Maine farmer who was forced to shut down his organic vegetable and grain farm due to PFAs. There's Susan Gordon, a Colorado organic farmer who was forced to close as well. Jason Grostick is an organic beef farmer in Michigan that's facing bankruptcy after his cattle became contaminated. Then there's Fred Stone from Maine. He had to euthanize nearly 80% of his cattle after they were contaminated back in 2016. He had been fertilizing his fields with biosolids from 1980 to 2004 under a state permit. Tony Coleman is a farmer from Texas who lost 35 cattle last year. His neighbor, James Farmer, lost two calves and a pair of horses. Both of these men's land became contaminated when heavy rain washed another neighbor's fertilizer onto their property. They started seeing dead fish in the pond that their livestock drank from. Currently, just two states, Maine and Michigan, are routinely inspecting sludge and farms for PFAs, and they're finding it to be a widespread problem. Concerns about biosludge have been elevated after 2018 testing showed two dozen Michigan wastewater plants were discharging high levels of the chemicals in their liquid waste after water containing PFAs entered the system from industrial sources. Michigan's efforts to investigate PFAs in wastewater plants has resulted in some reduction of contaminants from industrial sources. All 95 wastewater plants in Michigan's industrial pretreatment program were tested last year to see if their affluent contained PFAs. In 2021, Maine became the first state to enact a broad ban on non-essential PFAs. Maine also became the first state to ban biosolids after it was discovered 73 farms had astronomical levels of PFAs in their water, crops, cattle, and soil where the sludge had been spread. High levels of PFAs were also detected in farmers' blood. Maine is also investigating around another 700 fields where this toxic sludge was spread. Despite the state's best efforts, some farmers reportedly won't alert the state because they fear losing their farm. Maine also passed a bill authorizing $70 million to help farmers recover from PFA pollution. The fund would help with things like income replacement, farm buybacks, medical monitoring, and mental health monitoring.
Senator Susan Collins introduced a bill in Congress modeled after the Maine bill. It's called Relief for Farmers Hit with PFAs Act. It authorized a new $500 million U.S. Department of Agriculture grant program that would compensate farmers for the loss of crops, animals, or land from PFA pollution. However, it has sat in Congress since 2023 and hasn't moved. If passed, the federal grants would fund blood testing for contaminated farm families and workers, soil and water testing, contamination monitoring, remediation efforts, equipment upgrades, developing alternative production systems, educational programs, relocation, research, and much more. But it's not just the biosludge on our farmland that's contaminated. It's also in our drinking water. It's estimated that up to 70 percent of people who draw water from the nation's aquifers via private or public wells may contain PFAs. That's 95 million people, or nearly a third of the U.S. population. The U.S. Geological Survey has reported that groundwater contamination in some areas is up to 37,000 times higher than EPA limits. In some regions, virtually all of those using public systems that draw from groundwater may be drinking contaminated water. Studies even show that PFAs are so pervasive that they can be found in deer and turkey. Think you're safe? Chances are, no matter how hard you try to avoid PFAs, you're already contaminated. Estimates suggest that 97% of people have traces of PFAs in their blood. So what can be done? Well, this year, a group of farmers out of Texas sued the EPA for violating the Clean Water Act. They claim the EPA failed to identify at least 18 PFAs in treated sludge spread on farmland despite scientific evidence suggesting their existence. Now that you know where we've been, find out where we're going. Tune in to Ladies Love Politics, where you can stay informed without going insane.